that time spent investigating those things may seem like a waste of time or a horrible idea at front, at, uh, up front. But it can be the ticket to great innovation, to great success. We need to stop defining success in the way that it has been defined in the past and we need to redefine the way that we define success. If you have teammates working on your, uh, you know, under you, um, let's say you have a department, there's, you know, 300 people that report to you or your structure. Start to reimagine what success would look for them because you have burnout at the highest rate that you've had uh, in, in recent memory. Um, you know, you have the great, uh, what's it called, the great, uh, not recession, it's the uh, thing where people quit, the quiet quitting. You guys know about that? It's like people at work, they're just dialing it in, like, you know, I'm quiet quitting. There is ample opportunity for you as a manager, for you as a boss, for you even as an employee to say, you know what, let's start to redefine how we look at things. Take that approach that uh, Ray Kroc did and step outside the box to try to come up with a idea that would work. All right. My second tip for today on how to become, uh, re-become innovative and creative is to give it away. Highly controversial, all right? This is a highly controversial one. I just want to say it up front so that you guys don't get too upset, all right? Now, give it away for free whenever you can, okay? People generally get very uncomfortable when I say this, but the economy has completely changed from only five or 10 years ago to what it is today. It's completely changed. And your ability to stay competitive, your ability to stay innovative, requires you to give a lot away for free. Now, what do I mean? I mean, if you don't have a YouTube out there helping people, I don't know, file a permit to get you know, trash service or whatever, if you don't have a social media that has an honest and true voice to your constituents, you guys are in really bad shape. You might say, Nir, what's my return on investment on that, right? How do I justify giving stuff away for free? Well, that is an analytical question and I'm begging you to come over to the creative and innovative side. When we give stuff away for free, we end up energizing people to use our products and services in a way that maybe they wouldn't have never done so. And we build uh, incredible communities and we build incredible brands by allowing people to consume our message on their own terms. Allow people to consume the message on their own terms by giving it away for free. All right, so here's another one of my favorite parts of creativity and innovation. Choosing positivity. Uh, again, we, we did a ton of research for the book. I wrote something in there that English is the most negative language on earth. And that got redlined by the McGraw people. I, you know, it's crying. This thing was like, it was like a sea of red when I got my manuscript back. It's like just dripping red. I was like, oh, the worst, I'm the worst author on earth, right? And so we gave it to the research team. I said, guys, I, English is like, right, it's, it's the worst, right? You got, it's from England, right? The fish and chips are, are gross. Nobody likes fish and chips. England's weather, miserable, right? I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's always like that, that, that rain. I mean, you guys have been, it's just, of course it's the, it, it generates a lot of negative, negative words, right? It's England. So the research team and I worked together and we found that English has a ratio of six to one negative words to positive words. So for every word good or great, there are six times more words that are negative, like this sucks or terrible, you know, uh, unacceptable, on and on and on. So I said to my team, okay, um, it's got to be English only, right? And one of the, one of the guys who helps me with my stuff, like, you know what, let me, let me take a look. So we did the study and we studied 120 languages from all over the world. 
And we found that it's true in every single case. In every single language on earth that we have studied, there's something between a six and a 10 to one ratio of positive words to negative words. Isn't that crazy? I mean, like, that's wild. That means that our languages and the way that we communicate are set up to be negative and we have to actively want to transmit our message in a positive way. So, how do you start using this tool today? The first thing that you can do is start to think before you write an email, okay? I, I, I do it all the time. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be me in this case, right? I get an email from somebody on the staff and they'll say, Nir, you have to, um, you know, call Chrissy back because uh, she had the question. And I'll put, I'm the worst at this. I'll, I'm like the dentist with bad teeth, right? I, I'll put, um, okay, we'll follow up, send. Or got your message, um, really busy, send. Something like that. I'm the worst. Instead of doing that, what I highly recommend that you do is you take a minute to acknowledge the person who sent you the email and tell them, hi, you know, um, uh, Alyssa is the person who sent me these emails. Hi, Alyssa. I hope you're well. Thank you for sending me the email. I will follow up with Christy for sure, and it's going to be great, and I really appreciate you taking time to let me know. Okay? Now, I've studied the emails, okay? You guys are going to love this. I've studied the emails, the one-liners versus the just how, do you, how are you doing, how's your family, hope everyone's well, hope little Timmy, you know, doing well in literally, comma, near. Those emails are way more productive and end up getting you an incredible network of people that are genuine connections, right? Not just people that you work with, not people that you burn through. Um, versus the emails when you send those kind of like, hey, yeah, whatever, later, send. Um, you get people that it builds animosity, it builds a hostile work environment. People are like, ugh, I don't like Nier. I sent him emails and like he responds and like, what, is he really that busy? So I ask you guys to start choosing your language more positively at work, immediately. When you send emails, take a minute and say, okay, um, I'm going to address the person who sent me this email. You never know what happened to a person in the minute, five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, a day before they're interacting with you. And I think we have an obligation to take that moment and acknowledge the human being here. Okay? This might be a new business relationship. It might be one of your vendors, right, that you are interacting with. But if you just take an extra second to acknowledge them and to just be a decent human being, the creative and the innovative potential go up dramatically. What ends up happening is from these interactions, somebody will say, yes, Timmy's doing great at Little League, and by the way, um, I'll be in uh, Columbus next week, and then you say, oh, that's wonderful, let's meet for coffee. And then all of a sudden you're meeting with a vendor or a supplier or a customer um, in a position that allows you guys to do better work together. It is incredibly important to choose our language carefully. Now, here's another thing. When you leave voicemail and you're following up with people or you're calling people, choose the words that get you out of this cesspool of negativity and into the promised land of positivity. If you are able to do that, you will unleash creative and innovative potential simply by the interaction that you have between you and the other person. Now, I can't tell you, okay, if there's a guaranteed sort of ratio of how this will work, it will change depending on how you use it and what words that you use and what feels natural to you. But the ability to change your language so that it's more positive, the ability to adapt to the situation and allow positivity to shine, incredibly, incredibly important. Okay, so we will now cover something that
comes up when you start to become innovative and you start to become more creative. And that is the disease of self-doubt. 